You need to charge your mind to be the best you can be every single morning. As your standards increase, your mindset has to run parallel with the increased standard. So how do you stay away from anybody that's being negative? Like, how do you cut those people out? I know we touched upon it a little bit before, but like... Yeah, that was the question I asked you guys. Just say no, or, or just let them know, right? They may not like you ever again, but guess what? If they're weighing on you and bringing you down all day long, why, why would you let them be in your life anyways? So as I'm reflecting on the list of the seven, so number one is to surround yourself with high achievers and like-minded people. Number two is understanding that it's a lifestyle, not just something that you can pick and choose. It's not an outfit. Number three, you have to recommit every single day. Number four, you have to have a mentor or a coach. Number five, follow a system that works. Number six, surround yourself by positive people and always fill yourself up with positivity. And number seven, never stop moving forward. World-class lessons from the real estate industry's top 1%. Empowering agents to think bigger and do more to create life by design. Get access to exclusive interviews with top producing real estate professionals. Listen in as we talk about their journey in the business, best practices and lessons learned. Hosted by Kiro Nasrala and John Scipioni. You mean one thing that we always say in our office is just action is better than perfection, right? This is Light It Up with Lighthouse Residential. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Light It Up podcast. We are thrilled to have with us today a top producing agent out of New Haven County, Connecticut. Uh, he's currently with Century 21 and on track to do over 70 transactions this year. Uh, we have with us today, Mr. Tom Vanacore. Hey boys, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for being here, man. We're, uh, you know, we're always trying to bring either uh, top producing agents, team leaders, uh, real estate coaches, mentors, uh, all sorts of real estate professionals and uh, you know, to the platform that we think will add value to, to, you know, everybody out there watching this. And, and, you know, honestly, you checked a lot of those boxes, coach, team leader, top producer. So easy decision for us, man. We're, we're happy to have you here. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, and you guys are doing tr tremendous things. I mean, you got the fancy studio in the background over there. So <laughs> yeah, this is actually a curtain. <laughs> it's a green screen. <laughs> The struggle Good. is the glare. I, I tend to shine very, very bright, um, <clears throat> but I think I'm doing well. We had today. to start this episode late because Kiro's been in makeup for the last 16 I've been putting minutes. on blotting pads, but it's not really helping. Uh, yeah, yeah can, we, can we adjust that lighting on him, please? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, man, thank you for being on. It's, uh, it means a lot. I know it's an investment of your time. Um, so we're looking forward to this conversation, and we know a lot of people will get a lot of value out of it. So thank you. Bring it on. All right. So, Tom, we've uh, we've been introduced to you through the Mike Ferry organization as a lot of our guests in uh, uh, on the show. Um, and it's always helpful to get an understanding of the background, uh, really, you know, where uh, where they were when they started in the business, uh, some of the struggles, obstacles, where they're at today, uh, just a high level overview of where you're at. Yeah. Uh, so seven years in business. Um, my background is always in the restaurant business and, uh, you know, had a regular at the bar, just come in, Tom, you got to get into real estate one day. You got to get in, got to get in. And, uh, just, I listened to him and it was the best thing I ever did. Um, fast forward seven years later. Um, you know, my goal is, is, uh, to achieve the highest level of service, uh, for my clients and stay highly productive and increase my production on a yearly basis. Um, it's, it doesn't have to be much, but it always has to be moving forward. Um, fortunately, I uh, got involved early on in my career with the Mike Ferry organization and uh, followed the system that works. Got uh, acquainted with some great people that uh, really helped shape where I am today, especially you guys. Uh, I, so it, it's good to know you and uh, it's good to see you guys doing so well. Awesome, man. Well. Tell us a little bit more about like the hospitality industry, because I thought I always find it interesting that so many people come from hospitality and yeah. come into into real estate. If I remember correctly, was that down in Miami? Uh, all over the place. 17 years. Uh, we I started in the Outback Steakhouse with those ugly shirts and uh, fine dining in, in uh, Federal Hill in Providence, Rhode Island. Ended up in Miami Beach, Florida, helped open up some restaurants down there. 
um, the Viking Hotel, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, mostly the front of the house, which is, you know, waitstaff, bartending, management. And, uh, you know, it, it helped with the ability to, to read people. Um, I, I worked a late night bar in, in Miami. I checked in at 7 p.m. and I'd check out at 7 a.m. We served a full bar and a full menu till five in the morning. So managing the expectations of those, you know, those clients, those those customers at the the, uh, the late night of Miami Beach was very interesting to say the least. And yeah, it, it helped a lot. Just understand what people need and uh, setting a high bar in the restaurant business. Yeah. So that customer you were referring to before, the guy that was your regular, was which uh, restaurant was that at? Actually, that was when I moved back home. Um, I love Miami Beach. My father ended up getting sick. I ended up moving home to help out family. And uh, my father's doing well now and uh, ended up working at a local bar. Um, so it's, it's a bistro Mediterranean in East Haven, Connecticut. Um, what a place. Uh, worked there over the weekends <laughs> and met a lot of great people. I mean, the, the regulars that I meet at, met at the bar really helped, you know, shape the way I conduct my business today. And you never know. I, I had a chat with a, a bartender recently. I said, you never know what kind of conversation you're going to have with someone on the other side of the bar. You never know what the opportunity is on the other side of the bar. So I, I just think it's a special opportunity and, and it really helps, you know, understand the, the needs of, of the consumer. That's, yeah. yeah. Would you say that, um, what, the, so I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm so interested in this, but that the He's guy hungry, that you're, was your regular, is he actually in real estate? Was he an agent himself? Was he an investor? Or, yeah, he's an investor. Like, why, why did he think that you'd be so great? Well, we became friends. He used to come in every, you know, every Friday and Saturday, him and his wife. Um, and, you know, I don't know. Uh, he, there was opportunity. And um, we actually worked together. He's my business partner now. And... Um, you know, I started working, you know, on the job site with him. He was he was flipping homes at the time and, you know, going over, you know, the, the, the inventory, understanding, you know, managing the job site. And uh, I remember at the time I was just knocking on doors, trying to figure out leads for, for this guy. And I'm like, what am I doing? Let's, let's just get my license and, and you know, make, make some money selling property as well. So, um, yeah, it was just an interesting, interesting transition. I actually broke my thumb playing hockey and uh i couldn't i couldn't even hold up a bottle so i had nothing you know i had no choice to to dive right in that's awesome man i just think it's always interesting like from my perspective when i'm in in a restaurant or a bar or whatever and you know i'm i'm we're always all taught to always be recruiting and looking for your next hire and you know hiring in advance of the the person you actually need so i just think it's interesting to think of what that guy saw in you obviously it's it's you know, the, the work ethic, the, the fact that you could talk to anybody, the fact that you can manage a million things at once. And those are all great, great traits of, you know, uh, a team leader. So, yeah, even um, in Miami, uh, one of the one of my regulars, Giuseppe, I, I always would see him. He'd come in there. He'd be taking notes, you know, writing things down because he was hiring, you know, looking to get outside his business. He was a um, senior architect at, at the big city center in Brickell. And he was like, starting a new business and he would always take notes, look about other people. And, and I'd always be like, gee, just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. And he did. He did. We, yeah. he funded a, we, we wrote a business plan every, every morning till, till about 10 AM Starbucks. So I would leave 7 AM, write a business plan. And we were about to launch that business until, and, and, and that's when my father got sick. I ended up moving back, but we still stay in touch. And, and the fun, some of the fundamentals of business I learned from him and, and it's amazing what, what you could learn from, from your regulars. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. I think it just goes to show that because you were on the front end of that business, you uh, learned the importance of customer service. And that's why a lot of your clients today are repeat and referral business and your network is you treat them like gold. Uh, and that's ultimately being able to have a scalable business, a duplicatable business and repeat business. Um, and without your book of business, you're nothing right in this world. So, um, that's pretty, pretty cool. It's been a fun journey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tom, tell us what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given in the last seven years uh, that you would credit some of your success to? Wow. Uh, put me on the spot for that one. So yeah. honestly, it's, it might sound funny and it's, it's about 
humor. It's, it's about having a great time. Just enjoy it, right? We, we're, we're all going to make mistakes. We're all, we're all going to have, you know, have embarrassing moments, but you have to fall forward, right? And you have to joke around. See, my, my mindset is I take my business very serious, but I, I do not take myself very serious. And, and that really uh, was, was with the help of the Mike Ferry organization and, and you know, the godfather himself, Mike Ferry, preaching that to us. You know, we're, we're not going to make it out of here alive anyways. We might as well have fun. And, and that's something I really instilled in my business. And, you know, it's a very emotional business, if you think about it. You got buyer and seller, biggest, you know, assets of their life. And then, you know, there's there's multiple bids. There's, you know, there's a lot of chaos. We have to be the calming force. But what better way to be the calming force than throw in some humor and, and, and just have fun and, and you know, a smile goes a long way. So I, I honestly, that's probably the best advice I can give somebody is you're going to make mistakes no matter what. You're going to, you know, you're going to be uh, embarrassed plenty and just have fun with it. Yeah. And before we go into the meat of this uh, episode, what was the worst piece of advice you've ever been given? Worst piece of advice. Stay in the restaurant business. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the next step is is Vegas or, you know, maybe go to Hawaii, like Waikiki in a resort like that. And it just I had I felt like I, it wasn't it wasn't right for me. I learned a lot. And um, if I if I realized the, the the real estate business and if I got into the Mike Ferry system or just the system, period, into sales, I, I mean, I, I regret that often. So it's the people that encourage me to stay in that crazy business. That's yeah. awesome. So in preparation to this um, recording, we went through and one of the things that we, you know, uh, admire about you the most is your mindset and your continuous desire to grow the mindset. Um, we went through and we wrote down together seven steps that you said is uh, the key to developing a strong mindset. And your first one, um, and I know you've talked about it a little bit as well, is surrounding yourself with high achievers and people who are in the position that you desire to be in. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, well, I could use an example of, of the, 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 the area I grew up and a lot of people have a small town mentality, right? They're, they're just comfortable with these, you know, nine to five lives and, and, you know, they got the kids and they got this food, they go on Disney world once a year. And, you know, I, I just, I was never comfortable with that. Um, so, I always, I always felt like I needed to break away from that. And if you surround yourself with people that don't think bigger and that are comfortable with, I wouldn't call it mediocrity, but a, a comfortable life, right, quote unquote, then you're not going to be uncomfortable and grow to a higher, uh, you know, uh, heights, basically. And, and so being surrounded with like-minded individuals, people that are, are achievers that are, are, are trying to reach for the stars rather than be, be happy and, and, you know, comfortable where, where they're at is so important for me. And, and anyone that's, that's looking to, you know, really, really take off with their career. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. How, how have you been able to surround yourself with some, some bigger people? Yeah. I mean, the, fortunately the Mike Ferry organization helped out a lot with that. Um, you know, there, there's so many people that are doing just phenomenal things and achieving, you know, 150 to 200 transactions a year with it, it, it blows my mind. I mean, I met you guys. That's how I, I met you guys. And that's you know, we got into an accountability group. And to be honest with you, my business really took off. We, we, we would prospect together. I don't know if, if you've ever mentioned the, the, the Google Hangout that we used to, to do. But, we prospect together basically live and you know, that energy and you know, you're getting an appointment all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, I gotta get an appointment. And we're talking shit to each other. Right. <laughs> yeah. We're having fun. It's, it, it's a beautiful place where that energy is rippling yeah. and without it, what, how do you, how are you able to bring your mindset to the next level? Yeah. It's, it's impossible. Yeah. It's always interesting because it's like, you know, I think there's so much ego in this business that, yeah. You know, sometimes you you look within your own town and your own area and you say, all right, well, 
you know, the top producer in this area does this. And, you know, I'm working my way up, you know, doing a higher amount of transactions each year. And then you go to an event like like we've been talking about with some of the retreats and you start seeing, holy shit, these people are doing 300 deals, 500 deals, 800 deals, 1000 deals. And, you know, you realize that there's so much more opportunity out there and you just have to like get out of that small town feel like you said. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the first event I went to, I was like, wow, these people, they're saying the same thing I'm saying. They're dealing with, with the same type of objections. They're, 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 I could do this, right? Like, what, what, what's the difference between them and me? And, and that's where it clicked. Like, I was just, wow, I was blown away. It changed my life, literally, in that moment. And, and I just went to work after that point. Um, so yeah, yeah, though the ego does get in the way. And I feel like when you go to events or you surround yourself with somebody that's doing much better things, it kind of crushes the ego. You're just like, Whoa, okay. Yeah. Well, um, my life just hit a dead end there. Let's, <laughs> let's go back to, to square one. How can I be more efficient? Right. How can, how can I, I, I be better at the service that I provide? How could I prospect for more, you, you know, new leads? In, in one day and be more efficient. So it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's a, it's a humbling experience that, that we have to go through and everybody, I would encourage anybody to go through something like that. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Like people always say like, you, you know, you can't compare, you can't, you can't compare yourself to other people because it, it's just going to mess with your head and your mindset and all that. But then, you know, I think that the part that I struggle with sometimes and other people I think would struggle with is that, well, if you can't compare, you know, how do you look at what somebody else is doing as, you know, and, and keep it as uh, being inspiring, right? So it's, I think what we've come up with recently, the big word we've been using is just proximity, right? So it's, it's having the proximity to other people who are doing things at a much, much higher level and realizing that, you know, with a few tweaks, you could be doing the same exact thing, right? And I think what's, what's yeah. been most powerful for us recently is just and especially in MFO and, and other, you know, masterminds that we're part of is that everybody's willing to share, right? The participation is the best part about the, the coaching is tremendous and, and we all need to be coachable, but the participation, everybody's like-minded. They're all trying to achieve the same goal. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a powerful place to be. And, um, you know, thanks to you guys, I was in, be able to increase my production and, and now I'm running, you know, my, my own, um, Google hangout, which is, which is great. Uh, but I got a question for you guys. We talk about Let's turn into tables here, proximity, right? I'm going to throw yeah. it back at you guys. We talk about proximity. What do you do? What, what happens if, if there's somebody that's bringing you down, how do you handle that? You up the ante of the penalties and then you make them pay it <laughs> in general. Like what if one of the people in your friend group or somebody is, you know, uh, just, not cutting the mustard they're 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 being negative they're not they're not being a, a part of your production i mean me personally i i feel like i have different groups of people i i hang out with right like you know i have groups of friends that i you know enjoy hanging out with and drinking with and you know going to restaurants with and hanging out on the weekends and then uh, i have other groups of friends that i think really like inspire me to you know build my business and like read more and invest more and, and, and just do more in general. And I think you have to sort of know where everybody shakes out, but if somebody's going, you know, overboard with negativity and just really not seeing eye to eye, I think you have to find a way to, to cut them out. Trim the fat, baby. Gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes into your second point actually rather well, because you said that your second point was understanding that, you know, a winning mindset's a lifestyle. And as you start winning, you're being elevated. And if your friend group isn't elevating as well, then one of the groups has to fill the void. It's either you're gonna reduce yourself or they're gonna have to elevate to keep up with you. So um, what did you actually mean by that? And why was that second understanding it's a lifestyle? Because it's, it's the prep that goes on in your brain to achieve what happens the next day. That's so important, right? You need to charge your mind to be the best you can be every single morning. And, you know, as your standards increase, your mindset has to run parallel with the increased standards, meaning you have to figure out ways 
to stay fired up. You have to figure out ways to never, never get out of the zone or have somebody shake you to the point where like you're not fully focused. I call it third, third eye focus or just being laser sharp. But it all starts for me the night before, right? So I, I think about what's going on the next day, right? I, I, I write out my goals. And when I have goals written out, the next day I wake up and I'm a taskmaster. I know exactly what's going on. But we're also thinking about what's going to happen the night before, right? We're, we're manifesting what's going to happen to the point where I wake up in the morning and I make a decision for this day to be the best day of my life mm. every day. And you have to have that because we're only human, right? We're only human. And, and we have to just think about that decision is, am I going to be mediocre, Tom, right? Or, or am I going to be the best version of myself, right? The highest self, my, my best version. And, you know, in order to get there, it's a combination of what we've been talking about, but the preparation uh, the night before. Sometimes I'll do a, a future journaling. In other words, I'll write out exactly what's going to happen the next day. It, it, you know, and for example, three o'clock listing appointment, went there, crushed it. They loved me. Great enthusiasm. Got the contract signed. My, you know, my commission, my price. Or, you know, went to, went to lunch with a past client, had a great conversation, got another lead from it, right? It, it's when you manifest that and write it down, it's so powerful. Yeah. I think that's super important. That's, you know, I had a coach back in the day who would make me do a lot of visualization exercises. And I, I feel like I've gotten away from that for some reason, but, um, you know, visualizing yourself at, you know, your appointment or at your meeting or, or, or whatever big event you have coming up and just visualizing a positive outcome and, and you know, really seeing it come to fruition. So you're saying that you do the visualization and the and the the writing it out. That's in the morning or the night before? Night before morning, I have affirmations every day. I have an accountability group where we we write out what's going to happen and uh, in the future, and um, that's really powerful. I, I would advise anybody to do affirmations. At first, I was very uncomfortable with it. You know, when you're shouting out loud of of <laughs> who you want to be. Uh, it is there's something that 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 just charges you up and you're ready for the day um so morning affirmations you know the, the right exercise you know a routine the the, the system that's going to be the best that you could be um everybody works kind of differently when it comes to that but you have to have that routine and you have to figure out what gets you fired up to the point where you you're not going to lose yeah I think what you said is powerful, but it goes, you know, people let it slide. They don't reflect on it because when you decide who you are and you know exactly what you're going to be doing for that day, nothing can screw you over. Nothing can get in your way. And I don't know why this story came in my mind, but do you remember uh, around, right around the time when we first started going back to the offices, uh, maybe this was like towards the end of the summer after COVID, Tom messages the group. He was like, I'm leaving my office. And there was a shooting right outside my office. And then you that was left. Recently, wasn't it? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, and, that was. Weird. And then you left, but at the end of the day, you didn't miss anything of your accountability, and you reported a couple of wins for that day. So it's like nothing got in your way because you were committed to who you were going to be that day, and nothing was going to throw you out of whack because you already had predetermined how that was going to work out. Yeah. It's our job. I mean, it's, it's point blank. Leave the emotion at the door. It's our job. We're the calming force for our clients, and, and when we're engaged to do that, you can't let anything get in the way. I mean, so often independent contractors, they don't actually understand that this is a real job. If it was, if, you know, if you worked a nine to five somewhere with a salary and you just didn't show up or, or decided not to prospect, are you going to have your job? Exactly. Right. hundred percent. Right? And, and, and then, it, and then it, you know, the segues into the visual aid, you know, the visualization part of it. And that's so powerful. That, that's something that I've, I've been working on, more recently than anything, um, the great coach, uh, Tony Smith, he's the vice president of the Mike Ferry organization. He told me, uh, actually it was like a, it was a, it was a mini two day event, uh, for our firm. And he told us his pre-listing routine 
And it was so powerful. And I actually do that today. Um, I'll give you a good example. Um, and then we can move on to something else. But the door, <laughs> the doorway's on fire, right? The doorway's on fire. Yes. The sign in the front lawn, the wind's blowing. You see your rider. I go and fire it up. <laughs> I, I, I literally, that, that turns me into such a savage. It turns me, I do, I, I say to myself when I come through the, the lit up fire of the door, right? And which is, you just mentioned, and that's the visualization and it's showtime, right? I, I don't leave there without them kicking me out or I, I feel like, I'm not getting this. I'm getting this signed, or they're kicking me out physically or arresting me. That's how. <laughs> yeah. so I, I had a coach back in the day, uh, David Van Noy, used to say, John, you're either leaving there with a signed listing agreement or a signed restraining order. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, see, that's the, the, the mind. And, and I've been crushing it ever since that. So I, and I thanked Tony the other day about that. That's powerful, man. And it's interesting because. You wrote down, you know, you have to recommit every single day as your third step to a winning mindset. And it almost reiterates the lifestyle because this step is probably one of the most hardest uh, steps because it's all mental and it's all you talking to yourself to try to convince yourself. Is there anything that's in there that's that you'd have to do to yourself or recommit to get yourself fired up for the day as well? Yeah, that's that's a challenging situation, you know, um, especially have, if you have a great month. OK, um, last month in July, I had the best month I've ever had. OK, and, and, and it was the conversation with my coach and, you know, my friends. It's like how to keep the live that the fire is stoked, how to how to keep it alive. Right. Right. And it's not it's not easy. It's not easy to do. But when when you realize that you could do it right that becomes the standard. And, and if you allow it not to become the standard, then you're just going to have good months and bad months, period. Mm-hmm. You, you literally have to say, okay, look what I just did. I could do that. I took 10 days off last month too because I went to the Superstar Retreat. I had the best month. I could do it. Now that's my standard. Mm-hmm. That's so important uh, starting off from zero and just understanding that that you could achieve greater things as long as you increase your standards and that's your bottom line now does that make sense guys totally and it it so what was your month uh how many listings taken how many sold i took nine listings and uh seven pendings congratulations wait for 10 that's days. huge so in the month of july interest rates are now doubled what they were right you took 10 days off, so you worked 20-something days, and you took, what would you say, nine listings and seven pendings? Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's incredible, right? And, and I, my takeaway from that is that now your minimum standard is, you know, nine listings, right? Correct. Yeah, so I think- Which is uncomfortable. Yeah. And I'll admit it, it's, it's a bit scary, um, but it's achievable. And that's the thing that you have to tell yourself every day. For me, though, I think what I take away from that is you sort of dissect it, right? You start, you, you know, you literally take out a piece of paper like you were talking about your, your guy in the restaurant. What was the name? Giovanni? Oh, Giuseppe. Giuseppe. G-Money. All right. <laughs> so G-Money is in the restaurant taking notes. To me, it's dissecting it. All right, I took nine, right? But where did they come from, right? A couple came from past clients. A couple came from expires. A couple came from for sale by owner, whatever it was. You know, how long was I talking to this guy for? All right, I just met him two days ago. How long was I talking to this guy for? No, I've been working on him for a couple months. And you start realizing, like, how can I make this replicatable, duplicatable? How can I do this again in August, right? And you start sort of trying to reverse engineer it and say, all right, well, if I can map out my month, there's no reason I shouldn't be able to do the same thing in August or something damn close to it. And you start sort of figuring out ways to just speed up the process, right? You sort of thought like, oh shit, like I thought before that like seven was, was, uh, you know, a a lot of listings in a month and now I did nine. What did I do a little bit different to get an edge? What, you know, what can I do next month to get even more of an edge? So I think that's, that's huge. But how do you, how do you stay away from going to a place where, because a lot of agents, if they took, 
you know, nine listings or seven pendings, they start saying, all right, well, I'm going to make 200 grand 60 days from now. So why don't I take my girlfriend, uh, you know, to Ibiza and just go, you know, go balls to the wall. Like, how do you, how do you control yourself to not, you know, not go crazy and, and stay focused? It's a great, it's a, that's a great question. So you have to figure out ways to trick your, your own self. Okay. Whether it's an, an uncomfortable purchase or, you know, maybe, maybe it is treating yourself or, or your girlfriend to, to something yeah. because think about it, right? Everyone has a goal. Okay. And maybe we have a dream board there's a, there, and there's goals are in front of us, but in order to achieve that goal, right? What's necessary. And, and you have to dissect and, and figure out like the steps to get to that. Right. And there's a system in place. The system creates the habit. The habit allows you to achieve the goal. But, but what is the, but what is the burning desire to achieve that goal? And uh, again, I, I'm bringing Tony Smith up again. I had a conversation with him about two weeks ago and he told me, he said, Tom, I had a dream of a boat. Okay. And, and I had it on my dream board and I wasn't able to achieve that goal until I thought about the experience of the boat. And once I started visualizing the, like the, my family on the boat, mm. I achieved the goal. Okay. So sometimes it's about figuring out what makes you tick. Um, so with that advice, I was in Vegas. Uh, I, I, I grabbed my girlfriend. I said, let's go. We're going shopping <laughs> because I said, how am I going to, experience a different lifestyle. I walked into Hermes. I said, let's go. Let's let, we went on a shopping spree. And what happened is, you know, I, I put on a silk tie, $250 silk tie. I'm like, wow, I don't ever want to buy a tie. That's not silk or, or, or something so beautiful. Like it, it just enhanced my mindset to the point where I don't want to go backwards. Yeah. So I utilized a small experience of a, of a, of a different lifestyle to, to help me propel. And I woke up, you know, at the beginning of this month fired up. I don't want to go back. So that's how it worked for me, but you have to figure out what makes yourself tick yeah. and why you want to have that goal and, and what's important about it. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. I think the okay. core part of that is just committing to getting out of your comfort zone, right? Because when you commit to get out of your comfort zone, we were actually talking about it this morning. Uh, you know, there is a divide between people who go to the MFO retreats, between the ones who've made the commitment into their success and has signed up for coaching because they're super committed to it and people who haven't, right? And that $1,000, $1,200 commi uh, commitment is scary for some. And we were talking about at Grant Cardone. Tom, do you know how much Grant Cardone charges for four one-hour uh, coaching calls? I actually don't, but I, I do like Uncle G. Yeah. Uncle G charges a hundred thousand dollars, twenty five thousand per call. And at GrowthCon events, when he offers it up, saying there's limited positions, people run to the back, excited for the opportunity because that's how committed they are to get out of their comfort zone and to be exposed to something like that. So whether it's shopping, whether it's you know committing to a program, getting uh, you know a coach or a mentor, um, you have to be willing to commit to getting out of your comfort zone, which is pretty powerful, and leads us into number four, getting a mentor or a coach. What did you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, again, if you think about all of the professional athletes out there, all of the actors, any any of the comedians, do you think there's a correlation with the reason why they have coaches and multiple coaches, uh, not just one? You know, if you think about Tom Brady, he probably has a dietitian, a sports psychologist, he has a fitness coach. He, you know, he, he has a, a football coach, right? Why do you think that, right? It's so important to, to, to have a mentor or someone to look up to because, you know, we, we need somebody to push us and, and take our business and mindset to the next level. And, you know, quite frankly, if, if my coach wasn't pushing me, I, what's the point? So the accountability on the, the payments is one thing, but, you know, when, when a coach really does their job, they're always making me look at things in a different perspective and help me be more efficient, push forward. And, and that's the same thing I do when, when I coach my clients. 
And to be in the trenches, it's really fascinating because, you know, I realized that I had to be, I had to improve my coachability, right? In other words, I needed to become a better coaching client in order to meet, to be a better coach. And there's one thing about having a good coach, but there's another thing about not, you know, being coachable. Do you, do you understand what I, what I mean yeah. by that guy? Yep, totally. So if, if you don't, if you don't just let go of your ego and let somebody that's been doing it for a long time kind of take over and guide you, you're just going to have two, two left shoes on and run around in circles. I mean, bottom line period. So, uh, it's, it's interesting. The, the, the coaching, um, and I've been in, you know, I've been coached for four years now, or oh, I'm sorry, five years. And, 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 and I got involved with Mike Ferry coaching. I have 12, 13 clients right now. And, you know, it's, it's a rippling effect with my production. I'm able to be more enthusiastic and be a better coach. And you also don't want to, to you know, practice what you preach, right? Yep. So I realized there was some holes in my business that I need to button up and I'm such a better agent now because of it. So that that's a fascinating journey and I could talk about that all day, but um, having a coach and a mentor is, I mean, it's the difference between being an amateur and being a professional. Who do you want to be? Yeah, that's, that's good. There was a book that Mike recommended a while back. It was called Super Speed Learning. And there was three, uh, the ideology was there's three parts. Tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I might remember. And involve me where you're actually able to teach it to someone else. You'll never forget. And it, you just catch it. So the belief that you don't learn something, you catch it. When you teach it, you're forced to catch it because you have to represent what you're actually sharing, which is, which is pretty powerful in itself. So powerful. Yeah, man. So, so what are some things that you've learned from the people that you're actually coaching? Because I think a lot of people would find that interesting, like, you know, Tom, you're going to do 70 deals this year. And some of the guys and girls that you coach, I'm sure are probably doing 10 or 15, maybe 25 deals. People probably think there's not a whole lot that you could learn from them. But what what are some things that you may have learned from from some of your coaching clients? Yeah, good question. So the first thing is being prepared for my coaching call, right? Taking it a little bit more serious, um, having questions lined up, um, understanding that if there's a problem with the week, you know, reaching out to, to, to my coach uh, or, or, or much more often, utilizing the, the, the opportunity that you have, right? That's, in, that was instant, instant, because I'll tell you, the, the coaching clients that I work with that are more interactive with me, they ask questions, they bring, you know, they record the calls. Those are the ones that are moving forward faster than the others. Yeah. So it, it actually, it, it helped um, with, with, you know, me being more coachable. Yeah. yeah. And I remember you saying that it's actually helped you be a better listener as well, right? Oh yeah. My girlfriend's pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized before that I, I somehow pin, pigeonholed you into going to Ibiza. So uh, I apologize, but you know, if she sees this, I'm sure you're going to be asked to that's go on cool. a trip. Let's soon. Go. You know, that's, that's a great point. And, and I, I, I do feel that way, right? We, we're, it's not about what people say. It's about what they didn't say. And when you have the ability to increase the way you listen, and I mean um, engaging yourself more in, in what they're saying, then you, you're just going to increase your skills of, of understanding what the needs of that person are because it's a lot of the times it's about reading in between the lines. Mm. Um, so I think the fear in a lot of the coaching clients is not being completely honest with me. Right. So, uh, or, or just being embarrassed for, for some moments or, you know, and, and me understanding what they're really saying is, is really helpful to, to be, you know, a better coach and in turn a, a better agent. Can you give an example? Because reading between the lines, I think, is what makes a difference between an amateur and a professional. Because that's a skill that lets you dig in deeper and know that you need to ask another question. For an agent out there, what's an example that you can share? Well, the, the best example I could use is when you internalize a script. If you're, you, you have such an advantage over that. Because think about it. 
the, the script works, whatever a script is, if it's working and you're reading off of it, fantastic. But if you're thinking about what you have to say next, are you really listening to what they're saying? Yep. Are you really listening, you know, between the lines of, of what they're saying? So in, in the act of being a better listener, it's always directly correlating to being a better uh, salesperson, which is all about asking questions. Yeah. Yeah. So what I hear you saying is that once you internalize the script, it's just so ingrained in, in who you are that you don't have to think about what to say next which will actually cause you to listen and yeah. you know, be more engaged and involved in the conversation. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because think about it. If most of your brain is focused on what you're going to say or how to handle objection, imagine if, if that was so ingrained to the point where it was automatic, yeah. that's where, that's where you become an expert and you really hear what they're saying. Cause you're not focused on, on what you're supposed to be saying next. Yeah. So that's the best example I could use of, of being, you know, a better listener. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna say this because I have ants in my pants over here, and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. yeah, uh, he, <laughs> I'm like, I gotta say this he, before I forget. He wasn't uh, listening to what you were saying. He was just thinking about what no, he, what no, he had no, to say because next. This is the exact example <laughs> I gave. I gave this exact example last week, where like on the expired script, right? So when do you plan on interviewing the right agent for the job? When the person on the other line is screaming, you're not gonna ask question number two. Like if you sold the home, where are you going to next? You know you need to go to question number four, which is you know, Tom, what do you think stopped the home from selling? I hear your frustration. That's you hearing what's not being said because they're pissed. It comes through in the tonality, but they're not saying they're pissed. They're just pissed. So you know you need to give them what they want by knowing and being the script. That's, that's awesome that you said that, man. Um, which is crazy because you're, I promise you guys, this wasn't planned in terms of the structure of the order, but number five was following a system that works. So... Sure, and again, we're going over how to develop a winning mindset. So number five, follow a system that works. So Tom, tell us a little bit about the system that you follow. Um, give another shameless plug to the Mike Ferry organization. <laughs> and let's go from there. I mean, the, the day I walked into the door of my brokerage, they handed me the Mike Ferry scripts. So I, I just, I don't know anything better. Um, but when you follow a system that works, it it, it, it it makes everything less stressful and your entire team understands what to do next to create the ultimate experience for the client. So if you think about it, systems also work for creating better habits, which, which um, let's, let's, let's just talk about my schedule, right? Mm -hmm. So, Wake up, wake up about five thirty, six o'clock. Um, morning affirmations. Uh, go to the gym for about forty-five minutes to to, a, to an hour. Uh, I, I usually just kind of look at what's going to happen for the day, kind of get get immersed in that. Maybe talk to to my assistant real quick, text her what to, what to plan ahead for. Um, then I get involved in a role play. It's about thirty minutes. It's a group. We have a different role play partner each week and you know that's that's huge because it's like a warm-up i mean you're, you're getting ready then from 8 30 to noon i'm prospecting okay that's my system to increase business the morning is the sacred time and that's what i've learned through the mike ferry system that's the, that's what you should do every day to be successful um in the afternoon lead follow-up you know some admin time and then the afternoon is and the evening is for appointments. Now, if you don't have an appointment, then you should be prospecting. What else is there to do, right? So that's the system that I follow and it's a schedule. And that's something that is, is so powerful to, to be able to do that. Then if we want to kind of bring everything else together, the other four or five aspects of what we've been talking about is how you stay focused in on that schedule and disciplined to the schedule. Because as an independent contractor, it is not easy. It is not easy to stay on, on task, on board. If it wasn't for the accountability, I, I would be, I would say half, I would, I would do about half the production. That's how important it is for me. Yeah. So 
on a day like today, summer Friday, it's nice outside. What's holding you back from, you know, just cutting out early and, and, uh, you know, not sticking to the system? A $250 fine. <laughs> if, I, so if what? I, so I leverage, I leverage hefty fines uh, with my accountability group. Um, we have a morning affirmation at 6.30 and a picture to show that we're up. If we're one minute late, 6.31, $250 fine. If um, at 8.31, we're in the Google Hangout, one minute late, $250 fine. If we're not prospecting till noon every day, $250 fine. If we're not uh, taking a video of our listing presentation every day and sending it to the group by 8 p.m., 8 Eight, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 8 p.m. 8:01, $250 fine. If I don't list at least four properties and get four pendings, to $500 fine. So Love again, it. we're we're only human, so we have to figure out ways to keep us engaged and disciplined. I'm super competitive. I don't like to lose, and I don't like to lose money. Uh, can you I please it, share the story about what you did to Melissa when she went on vacation? That was I was dying in the retreat when what? I asked you. I was like. So I, I see Melissa in the retreat. I'm saying hi to her. One of the first things she says, you know, Tom stole, uh, took $2,500 from me. I'm like, wait, what? And then she's like, yeah, the accountability. And I'm like, no way. I talked to him about it. He's like, yeah, I was getting that money. <laughs> so I, you have to enforce the rules. 1,000%. If you are not going, if, if you do not enforce the rules, it will unravel. Your accountability group will unravel. You have to. Melissa, she didn't have service wherever she was. She was on a, a retreat somewhere. I'm not, I don't, I don't care. It's the rules are the rules. We sign a contract that says you owe $250 if you don't record the video. She happened to not record it for a week. And I said, Hey, pay up, let's go. You know, <laughs> and, and you know, if you don't enforce that and, or if the, the fine doesn't sting, then it will unravel quickly. Of course, because I'll tell you firsthand, I mean, the next time then you go on vacation, right? Have a couple cocktails at dinner, you're looking at your watch, yeah. eight o'clock is approaching, you're like, well, Melissa didn't pay a fine, so I just won't record mine, and I'm not gonna feel anything for it because that's what happens, right? Well, we, uh, we've been through that, and, I, and I've been <laughs> in other groups where that's, that's happened, and you have to either walk away from the group or, you know, just, Put your foot down and understand that this is important. Oh, so yeah, yeah no. <laughs> we went into that on on Tarek's episode, man. We uh, we had a good time with that one. Yeah. I mean, I've I've filmed that listing presentation in some strange places. I filmed that in like the corner of a, <laughs> in the corner of a wedding behind the DJ booth. I'm like, thanks again for having me over. I'm excited about getting your home in the market, and getting it sold. Yeah. And then yeah, I filmed it once in like a men's warehouse. I was getting fitted for my buddy's. Uh, <laughs> tuxedo for his wedding and it's like 742 and i'm like oh shit man yeah. looking for funny, service man. and enough bars and all that but we've all been there i think the weirdest place i recorded my listing presentation was in the bathroom of a boat and <laughs> and, it, and it got really choppy and i literally fell over like onto the toilet <laughs> and, and i'm just like still still finishing up uh it, it, i mean i i've been on vacation on the beach it, it, it is what it is. It's a rule. Yeah. And that that keeps you laser sharp. I'm telling you that that, that uh, it's so internal to me in my brain that I don't I'm, I'm such a better agent. My listing presentation is 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 spot on because of that. Again, I'm not thinking what I need to say. I remember the days when I used to be, you know, I, I, I still bring the questions with me just in case I get off track or something. Maybe a crazy objection is thrown at me. But. I remember the days where I was like so nervous about what to say and focus on the next line that I wasn't even listening to them. Yeah. So it, it, it's, that's so important. And, you know, we, we can go into that all day. You know, the accountability thing, I'll just say one more thing is just, you know, some people watching this might say, well, well this is crazy. Like, why would I like, you know, uh, why would I sign up for that? And like, you know, but if you think about it, right, $250 fine for not sending your presentation, right? Yeah. Say you get fined four times a month. And, and you shouldn't be, but say you do, that's a thousand bucks, right? At the end of the year, you paid $12,000, right? But to do that presentation that many more times will earn you 
five, six, ten times that in commissions. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's a sick game that we have to play with ourselves. But just hearing you talk about it again makes me miss makes me miss that group <laughs> because we have three three more uh, availabilities. So you let us know. <laughs> All right, Sounds man. Good, man. One of the things that struck uh, and it's interesting how it flows into the next one too. Um, the accountability and it unravels if you don't have everybody upholding a high level of integrity, enthusiasm, and being positive. So at the, the seven steps, number six is surround yourself with positive people and fill yourself with positivity. Take your job serious, but don't take yourself way too serious. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, but you know, that's a challenge, especially in the past few years. Have you noticed people are just so angry lately and, and, and negative? I don't know what it is. Maybe it was from, you know, COVID-19 and, and just what's going on with, but I, I feel like there's so much negativity and it's, it takes so much energy to filter that out of your brain that the, the, if you, if you put yourself in a position with less negativity, it's just easier life to live. And, and it's easier to stay sharp and strong. I mean, think about it, the media. I mean, is there anything good in the news? No. Nope. You know, so I, I literally don't watch the news. People are like, oh, you, you're not going to know what's going on. Well, people tell you what's going on. Yeah. You figure it out. Everybody's going to tell you. And I always tell people, like, if you really need to know, I just go to people like yourself and I'll ask them, like, people that I know I have common viewpoints with, right? I'm like, hey, what, what's going on with this situation? Like, <laughs> what, what should I be thinking? What, you know, and you go, to, you choose the source, right? And you could go to like-minded people that, that uh, you know, think the way that you think and, and sort of, you know, run their business the way that you think. And, and you yeah. can share ideas with, with plenty of people out there. You don't, you don't need to, to turn it on. Yeah. yeah. That's good, man. So, so how do you stay away from anybody that's being negative? Like, how do you cut those people out? I know we touched upon it a little bit before, but like. Yeah, that was a question I asked you guys. I know, but like, how do you, how do you make sure, like, if, if you see it going in that direction, whether it's somebody that's, you know, in your office or somebody that's on a, like, you know, some, like, like we talked about before is that you could cut somebody out of your group of friends, right? But that's your friends. Those are people you choose to be around. What if it's somebody that's in your office that like, you could choose not to talk to them today, but they're going to be back there tomorrow. How do you stay away from situations like that? And, you know, cut that sort of situation out. Well, I mean, you know, here's the reality of the situation. There, there are some people that are negative that may, uh, that, that you can't get away from. Right. And low doses. Right. It could be your family member. Yeah. Right. You know, hopefully it's not your girlfriend, your wife. Right. I think that would be a problem. But but think about it. And, and you have to have the ability just to, to just say no or, or just let them know. Right. They may not like you ever again. But guess what? If they're weighing on you and bringing you down all day long. Why? Why would you let them be in your life anyways? So. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm pretty blunt. I, I do not sugarcoat something. If somebody wants to get out, like if I need somebody out of my life, I'm going to tell them flat out. Listen, you're, you're not supporting my lifestyle. You're not supporting, you know, my, my productivity. You're, you're just feeding me with negativity and, and, and it's bringing me down by, yeah. I, I know it sounds harsh, but you have to do that. You have to. Yeah. I feel like, uh, both you and Kelly, your sister, you know, were surrounded by a lot of uh, positive, funny people growing up. Because I, I don't know, I was thinking about your sister's post on Instagram the other day. She posted, I'm sure you saw it, where she was driving in the Jeep. Did you see it? <laughs> I, I, um, both of you just cracked me up on Instagram. So I think you guys both come from uh, obviously a great family, but like, you know, a, a fun enthusiastic, supportive sort of, yeah. My father is an absolute beauty. Let me tell you, <laughs> this guy is a legend. I call him up. I called him up the other day and I said, congratulations, congratulations. He's like, what, what are you talking about? The only one with me. I said, it's been almost 20 years that you gutted your kitchen and you still haven't had <laughs> renovated again congratulations <laughs> so this is a perfect example of my father so so i said tell you what i'm gonna i'll buy you the countertops if you buy the cabinets so he bought they bought them really nice some fabby woods i mean it, 
he started painting, things got going. Guess what? The cabinet sat there for seven months, okay? In the boxes, in the dining room. So the other day I go over there and, and I, uh, I see that the boxes are open. I'm like, oh, nice. I'm like, you started, you started using, you know, putting the cabinets up. That's fantastic. He goes, nah, I just needed a place to put the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and guess what, Tom? Now, if the dishes are in the cabinets, you hang them up, the dishes are already in. This guy <laughs> is a beauty. I mean, so we, we just grew up having a great time. I have three sisters. Um, all such different personalities, and we we just we've we've laughed our, our whole life, and and you know, I, I I think that as real estate agents, sometimes we we are viewed as very robotic, and that's why the humor. My wife, and, my wife has never said that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that, that's the thing that you know we're we're viewed as as uh, robots sometimes, and yeah. the humor. The, the having fun and you know it, it kind of humanizes us a little bit what, what do you guys think about that i think you're spot on man i think that the uh march i'll never forget it in march once we had an official lockdown john and i got kicked out of the gym so our morning routine came to a weird you know transition we didn't stop we kept going through it but then you know that saying it says when you're looking for problems you'll see obstacles when you're looking for opportunity or when you're looking at what's like what's going good you'll see opportunity within it um, like I was like having mental breakdowns every day. I was just like, oh my God, everything's going to crash. And John's like, this is the best year ever. Like, this is awesome. I'm like, well, what are you, what are you looking at? So if it wasn't for like John and you guys, like I would have been like a mental breakdown at all times, but it's like, it kind of reinforces that, right? Where who you're surrounding yourself with matters. And are you looking at problems or opportunities? And if you're looking at problems, you're going to hundred percent find obstacles because at that time there was newsletter after report after like, you know, investment like feedback saying that the world's going to crash but it's like i'll talk to you guys and you guys would be like yo i'm killing it i just did x y and z this is amazing um and it was just those are the kinds of things that you wanted to be around not like 200 people died in 24 hours in italy and the world's crashing <laughs> whatever whatever's the there's always some sort of obstacle some sort yeah. of speed bump right before it was covid now it's interest rates you know now it's inflation Whatever it is, like, you know, six months from now, it's going to be some other bullshit. It's you just have to cut it all out. And I remember during COVID, I would like go to the same Starbucks every morning. There was a top agent in our market and I would run into him Starbucks like three out of five days a week. And I remember one morning I'm standing there waiting for my coffee and he's like, hey, man, markets market sucks right now. Right. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, you know, and in my head, I'm like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> what? Like, this is one of the best months we've ever had. Cool. And. But like I sort of felt myself going in that direction for just one second. And you have to immediately just sort of, you know, it was about who I was surrounding myself with. And, and you know, you just sort of uh, have to make sure you really pay, pay close attention to that for sure. Because that was another top producing agent and, you know, totally different viewpoints. Yeah. So, Yeah, I was looked at. I remember when. You know, with, with everything shut down, this was what March 2019, and I didn't even know it was like the zombie apocalypse, right? It's like, what's going on, right? Am I going to be out of a job? And then all of a sudden, as as you know, the real estate market just took off, and and my phone never stopped ringing. Um, but I, I I I always looked at it like an opportunity. I I never, I, and I and I could say this confidently, I never looked at it. Within, with fear. I looked at it like this is an opportunity not only to double down on your business and, and just come out the other side like so much profit, more profitable and, and, and such a better agent, but also a better person. It was like a time to purge, almost like where this negativity like had, had to come in and, and play a role. And, and, and just it, our job was just to break through it and, and just understand those bonds and like being around your family and just being able to hold them and be with them. And it, it, it was always an opportunity. And that's how I look at this market shift right now. Yeah. yeah. It's for me, it's an opportunity. I bring it on. I, I started the business in a normal market. I know how, I know that I have the systems in play to, 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 to be a great agent. And I practice being a great ed, agent every day. I have the mindset to do it. And it, it, it's just, it's, it's all up here, yeah. right? 
I will never let the market dictate my production ever. It, it, it can't. It yeah. can't. I think and it's... look at all the agents that jumped into the marketplace that don't actually know what they're, you know, actually know what they're doing. And, you know, that's opportunity for me. Okay, yeah. bring on, bring it on. You know, instead of like the doom and gloom, oh my God, no, nothing's going on. Yeah. Keep telling yourself, you got to change the story to change the results. And the story is what's in your head. Yeah, 100%. That segues into the seventh step, which is perfect. No matter what's going on, you have to never stop moving forward. Yeah, yeah, it's sometimes it's exhausting, right? But Every day it's exhausting. It's, <laughs> it's not easy. Uh, what we do, it's not easy. Uh, we wear a lot of hats and, you know, we have to take on all of the emotion and, you know, we have to be the calming force. It's our job to figure out a solution to the problem that didn't happen yet. Okay. And in order, in order to be in that right mindset, you have to start from zero. Right. So August 1st, I had a great month. Okay. You've got to start from zero because if, if you become complacent, you're, you're, you know, what does Mike say, you know, open up, buy a casket, open up, you know, open it up and just lay in it because already dead. You're, you're, you're better off dead. Yeah. I mean, it's the disease of the human spirit and you have to figure out what makes you tick. What, what are you doing this all for? Why do you wake up in the morning and, and do the affirmations and the role play and, and, and the accountability? What is it all for? So I think when you, when you kind of step back and, and look at the, the whole perspective of, of, you know, the why it's really helpful. And it allows you to be relentless and tenacious and it allows you to have the discipline on a daily basis to achieve your goals. Yeah. You know, as I'm reflecting on the list of the seven, so number one is to surround yourself with high achievers and like-minded people. Number two is understanding that it's a lifestyle, not just something that you can pick and choose. It's not an outfit. Number three, you have to recommit every single day. Number four, you have to have a mentor or a coach. Number five, follow a system that works. Number six, surround yourself by positive people and always fill yourself up with positivity. And number seven, never stop moving forward. You, you can almost not like remove one of them because it's like they're all intertwined with each other and they all depend on each other um, to ultimately accomplish uh, you know, a growth mindset, which is pretty awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Well, dude, thank you so much for spending so much uh, time with us today. We really appreciate uh, all the insight. It's always good to, you know, like, like I said in the beginning, it's, it's, we're meeting with other agents and team leaders all the time, but you know, you're, you're actually out there coaching people as well. So I think that's, that's a huge uh, addition uh, to the conversation. So uh, really appreciate you spending some time with us today. And if anybody wanted to connect with you, what's the best way for them to reach out? I, my, my cell phone, uh, I have it on me at all times, 203-802-7252. Uh, my, my email is tvantvan213 at gmail.com. And if you want to hit me up or follow me on Instagram, tvsoldit is, is my handle. So i uh, love to love to see you on there. You boys are killing it. I love what you got going on. Just really inspiring to see where you where you were and where you guys are too i can't i can't wait to see you know what's what lies ahead for you and uh, i feel very honored to, to be on here um you guys are a lot of fun and, and, and inspiration to everybody of course man well, kind was, words tom as always and uh, it was uh easy decision man we yep. uh we've always uh been inspired by you and and you always keep us uh positive and, and energetic too so it's it's awesome man if you're ever having a down day, go watch one of Tom's stories. It'll lighten you up <laughs> in a heartbeat. I turn, um, it down. I turn it back a notch a little bit. Why is that? Because you're a coach now? Uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I think that, you know, people are, are, are always judging you based on, you know, your stories. And I still have fun with it, right? People are judging you based on your Facebook and what have you. Um, you know, they don't need to get the wrong impression. I mean, I, listen, you know, Humor is perceived by the eye of the, of the, the beholder or the guy who, who is laughing or not, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think you have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, but uh, Don't be you know, too I'll, careful. You know, 
you know how I you know how I roll. I, I, got, <laughs> I got some funny stuff on there, and and, and we have to, we have yeah. to. So awesome, essentially, man. if you want a growth mindset, call Tom. He'll lighten up uh, your day and uh, get you uh, stronger than you were before. Guys, let's get together. Where are we going? Where are we going? Want to do a Cali trip soon? Oh, let's do it. Okay, I'm <laughs> yeah. ready.